Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to invite you to okay. welcome you Thank to you the me. February Board of Trustee meeting for Kansas okay. Kansas Community College and ask you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Once again, welcome, and I'll ask Peggy, Peggy to please call the uh, roll. Trustee Ash. Here. Trustee Breitschall. Here. Trustee Daniels. Here. Trustee Blunder. Here. Trustee Maddox. Here. Trustee Rios. Here. Mm -hmm. Trustee Townsend. Here. All right, thank you, Peggy. And now I'll entertain a motion for approval of the amendment of the agenda. So moved. Second. All right, a motion and a second. Are there questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And now I'll entertain motions on approval of the minutes from the January 14th first and then the January 30th 2014 move meeting. approval of the minutes of January 14 2014 second all right motion into second questions all in favor aye. aye any opposed carries move approval of the minutes of January 30th 2014 second all right a motion to second any questions all in favor Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, Trustee Rios. All right, and now we are at audience to patrons and petitioners in the agenda. Do we have any members of the audience that would wish to address the board today? If so, please step to the podium to my left. All right, seeing none, then we'll move to uh, you're looking for a motion uh, yeah I guess so because I'm looking at something different than you all are looking at oh. so go ahead JD <coughs> oh. uh, move what, it. hold on before oh. you do that let's uh, let's recognize the students that we have here first that's why I'm looking at so funny at your note here, Dr. Kimmons, because I don't have that on my agenda. So, all right. Okay. So, it, could you hold that just oh, for sure, a second, sure. JD? I, uh, yeah. Okay, Dr. Gibbons. On Thursday, February the 13th, Stacy Tucker and Phi Theta Kappa students Ryan Proctor and Gabriella Costa visited with legislators, and they are here today to share with the board. And you have the program in front of you. It has the purple on it mm -hmm. from that session. Stacy. Good afternoon. We will not take very much of your time today. Um, today I have this year's All Kansan Academic Team nominees with me. There were 52 students that were named to the All Kansan Academic Team across the state of Kansas, and the students are given this honor based on their academic achievement, leadership ability, and community service. The program recognized um, the sponsors for the event is Phi Theta Kappa International Headquarters, the Kansas Association for Community College Trustees, and the college presidents across the state. Today I have Ryan Proctor and Gabriella Acosta with me. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Ryan Proctor. I am majoring in civil engineering. I am planning on graduating in May and going to Kansas University. My name is Gabriella Costa. I am a pre-med major and I will be graduating in May as well. I plan on attending Washburn University. As the All Kansas nominees for Kansas City Kansas Community College, we had the opportunity to attend the All Kansas Luncheon last Thursday in Topeka, Kansas. Before the luncheon, we visited the Capitol and had the chance to meet with state representatives including Stan Fraunfelter and Valdinia Wynn. We also met with State Representatives Broderick Henderson and received these certificates from Willie Duff. This year, Brian was one of the 10 students selected for the presentation that took place on the State House floor prior to the luncheon. 
We would like to thank the following inv individuals for joining us in Topeka. Trustee Ash, <coughs> Dr. Givens, Dr. Vitale. Dr. Kramer, Dr. McDowell, and Dr. Long. And here are a few pictures uh, taken in Topeka. Yeah, they love me in <laughs> Well, it's a wonderful event that uh, KACCT is proud to host each year, and we're so proud of the two of you uh, for making the all-academic team, and what an exciting day I know that you had at the Capitol uh, as we visited at lunchtime and, uh, you know, meeting with the representatives, being recognized on the House floor. Uh, it was a really big day, and it's a very, very important day for community colleges in Topeka as well because it gives the legislators an opportunity to see firsthand for themselves the work that's being done at community colleges and to get to know real people and hear real personal stories about the difference that community colleges are making uh, in their lives and will continue to make in their lives as they as they go forward so congratulations uh, on your recognition and it was a delight and a pleasure to share uh, half of the day with you up there and uh, we wish you well in your endeavors moving forward. Let's give them a nice round. Of applause. Uh, uh, trustees wish to address the students or ask questions. Well, I actually just would like to have a closer look at the certificate. Oh, okay. Would you hand uh, maybe Ryan hand it there and yeah, we'll send it down. And maybe Gabriella, you could start yours over here. <coughs> <laughs> okay, um, Stacy, is there anything else you'd care to, to add regarding your uh, Phi Theta Kappa charges? I don't think so. I'd just like to thank all of you for attending. I know you all have busy schedules. Um, the students, Ryan doesn't know this yet, but your scholarship checks did come today. Peggy brought them down. So thank you to Dr. Givens for getting those to us. <laughs> All right, outstanding. Okay, uh, any bo other board members? All right, well, once again, congratulations, and yes. thank you for representing our, our college so, so well, and as well as representing yourselves and your families. I know they're extremely proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. No, I didn't. I didn't talk about it. Okay. Now, J.D., I think we're ready for that motion. Now we're ready. Uh, <coughs> I move that uh, we uh, recess into executive session to discuss non-elected personnel matters to protect the privacy interests of the individuals to be discussed and also to discuss confidential financial data uh, or trade secrets of a business to protect the interests of the business to be discussed for a period of I would recommend for the second one 15 minutes, Trustee Rios, and I would also ask that it be under the attorney-client relationship to protect the communications which would be deemed privileged in the attorney-client relationship, and you would invite uh, Mr. Warner and his son in on that one, and my suggestion is you take that matter up first in the 15 minutes. Okay. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, the motion carries. We will temporarily adjourn here and rejoin you in 15 minutes. Okay. Apologize motion for that to come glitch. back into session, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll call the meeting back into uh, open okay. session. And we are at uh, item seven on the agenda communications. There is um, in your board packet the Saturday Science, Math, and Technology Academy is having the parent family breakfast and demonstration day on February 22nd. So I wanted the board to be aware of that and possibly attend. It's always a, a great event. Okay. So that's the only communication. And I see here we have a resolution regarding consumption of alcoholic liquor. Um, 
March 13th is the first one up at the Jewel Center. Trustees, do you see that? Yes. Do you have that? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, so we can discuss. I'll make the motion to approve the resolution regarding consumption of al uh, alcohol. Al alcoholic <laughs> on March 13, 2014 in the Jewel Center. And then I'd like to have detail about this. Okay, we have a cabaret. motion. Second. And a second. Okay, now uh, questions or discussion? J.D., you have? Uh, yeah, just some background on this. Shirley. Thank you, Tris. <laughs> All right, you got it. <laughs> Maybe if my career in administration doesn't work out, I can get done with the uh, ladies' <laughs> basketball team. <laughs> <laughs> um, be that as it may, this is a pattern, an event. It has been going on for uh, some time. With John Stafford started as a uh, as a fundraiser for the uh, for the vocal jazz ensembles at Cabaret, and uh, this year, based on the uh, success of A Night in Heights uh, last fall, he'd like to expand it, the potential of it, to uh, include the sale of, of uh, alcoholic beverages um, to attract a. a bigger audience and support some of the travel that the students are doing. And he's been working uh, with Ms. Barbara Clark Evans about uh, control measures and she'll be glad to explain them to you. Thanks. Okay. Hi. Um, for those of you who came to a night in the Heights, it pretty much the same type of setup. The um, alcohol costs will be included in the cost of the ticket. Uh, we're trying to make the event a little more upscale to attract a, a higher ticket price. As uh, Dr. Walker just said, the money is used for um, the travel money for the students who are going to competition in New York City. So um, it, John wanted to change it. The event's been going on for several years and it's pretty much been the same type of event. So he's wanting to change the event as we go on so that it can be something ongoing. It can be new and different. We can have a higher price point as we move forward and continue to fund student activities. Okay. Okay. Other okay. questions or comments? Mr. Wynn, do we need to read the resolution? Yes, Mr. Chairman, you do. You probably don't need to read the second one because this is in accordance with the normal standards and procedures and resolutions you passed in the past. Am I correct? Yes. Read the first resolution and then you can take the second action regarding the second activity without reading it if it's your pleasure. We have, <coughs> excuse me. We have a copy of the resolution? Uh, you, I don't know. I don't know. I had one at my place. Did you all have one at your place? Not of the resolution. I think it definitely has to be read in a I agree. Sorry. Okay. This is a resolution regarding the consumption of alcoholic liquor in accordance with KSA 41-719-I. Whereas Kansas statutes annotated 41-719C prohibits the consumption of alcoholic liquor on the public property except where expressly permitted by law. And whereas the Kansas City, Kansas Community College is authorized under Kansas law to exempt from the provisions of KSA 41-719C specified property which is under the control of the KCKCC Board of Trustees and which is not used for classroom instruction. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of KCKCC Section 1, KCKCC hereby exempts for Thursday, February 27th. March 13th. March 13th. All right, March thir Thursday, March 13th, 2014. Um, the banquet areas of the Jewel Center. Right here. From the requirement of KSA 41-719C. And Section 2, the exemption is granted in connection 
with the holding of the dinner and performance event, Cabaret Laze Le Bon Temp Rulaire. <laughs> that was passed and approved. I had French one somewhere along the way. <laughs> passed and approved by the board of KCKCC in a special meeting held on October the 13th. A little approval of the resolution. I think we had a yeah, motion order. and a second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much. Well, we have a second resolution. I move approval of a resolution regarding consumption of uh, alcoholic liquor at the Kansas City, Kansas Community College meeting greet event, April 24, 2014, at the Thomas R. Burke Education Center lobby. Okay, we have a motion. So moved. No, we have one. We need a second. Second. And a second. All right. Are there questions? Uh, concerning this resolution yeah, and I have that, the resolution to read yeah, we don't have that copy either so I guess if we don't read it I just ask is the language the same except the change or the uh, okay. event I have you have to read it mr. chairman the therefore part of it please mr. chairman yes uh, the, the opening language is the same now therefore it be resolved by the board of Casey KCC section 1 Casey KCC hereby exempts for April 24 2014 the lobby area of the Thomas R. Burke Technical Education Center, located at 6565 State Avenue, Kansas City, Kansas, from the requirements of KSA 41-719. Section two, this exemption is granted in connection with the holding of KCKCC meet and greet event. This event was passed and approved by the Board of KCKCC in a meeting held on February the 18th, 2014. There are no further questions. I missed, I missed something. I, something. I didn't. What's going on down there? It's a meet and greet event. Uh, again, I believe hosted by the Endowment Association. Yes. Yes, the, and once again, as, as Council Wynn pointed out, the opening language was the same. We are exempting uh, the prohibition of the consumption of alcoholic liquor on the public property. So it's the same, that part's all the same, all right? All right. We just changed the venue and the date. Okay. I'm ready for it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, the motion carries. Move approval of the resolution regarding the consumption of uh, alcoholic liquor in accordance with KSA 41-719. Uh, for the uh, Kansas City chapter of the National Tool and Machining uh, Association monthly meeting taking place at the Thomas R. Burke Technical Education Center. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Once again, trustees, the opening language is the same. We are exempting the prohibition of consumption of alcoholic liquor on the property here. And then we continue. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of KCKCC, Section 1, KCKCC hereby exempts for Thursday, February 27, 2014, the multi-purpose room of the Technical Education Center from the requirements of KSA 41-719. Section two, this exemption is granted in connection with the holding of the Kansas City chapter of the National Tool and Machining Association monthly meeting, which was passed and approved by the board of KCKCC in a meeting held on February the 18th, 2014. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And I think it's a clean sweep. Thank you very much. All right, uh, President Gibbons, uh, item, agenda item number eight, your report. Uh, Mr. Chair, the first president's newsletter went out on February 28th. Um, and a big thank you to Kelly Roji and Lisa Klein, who assisted me with the formatting of the newsletter. We have the Donuts with Dunn and Doris on January 23rd. 
uh, Melinda Kimmel, Mary Wishall, Lewis Hall, Robert Beach, and Melinda Knight attended. We had several Martin Luther King uh, events throughout KCK and faculty, staff, administrators, board of trustees members uh, attended those. Um, following lunch with the Phi, Beta, uh, Phi Theta Kappa students, there was a separate uh, COP meeting, COP meeting Council of Presidents. Uh, we had many interesting thoughts and concerns about uh, what's going on in the legislature. And um, uh, one very interesting thing for those of you who might be interested in moving forward toward a college presidency, at the COP, we discussed establishing a 14 to 18 month training for administrators who are interested in pursuing a community college presidency. And that would begin the first class in January 20, in July 2014, so that's this summer. Um, the fast moving legislature has caused us to have a special meeting of the COP on um, Monday from 11 to 2, so I'll be traveling to uh, Butler College for that special meeting to respond to issues that the legislature wants specifically answered by community colleges. Um, <clears throat> the final copy of the final draft of the KCKCC organizational chart is at your places um, for you to peruse. And the chart appeared in the president's newsletter uh, when it went out. You will also notice that uh, people are wearing name badges. And that is, um, uh, as of the 1st of February, um, that is something new that's implemented at the college, that all employees wear their name badges. And uh, Board of Trustees uh, may receive theirs if they go to the police station. They are well prepared to make name badges, ID badges for you too. That's my report. Yes, the trustees, I'd encourage all of us to stop by the campus police office and process so that we too can uh, be in compliance with that uh, policy. It's everyone's job to help us all be safe. Um, and so we can do that by properly wearing our identification. So I encourage you. Maybe, can we get that done after the meeting? Will yes. there be somebody there? Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Under uh, President's report, is it uh, time to ask questions on uh, either the campus police or college relations that are reporting to the President now? Sure. Is that all right? Or? Mm -hmm. Okay, under uh, college relations, I, I was wondering if we uh, could have a sample of the phase one direct mail and video promotion. Yeah, is that kind of you know, shown here, or or maybe it needs to be at a later time, I don't know. Yes, he came and he said that he would like to do it later instead of today. Okay. So we will do that later. Okay. And then... Uh, but if you have questions you want to ask, Jim Beachwood is still here? Okay. He's uh, here. Well, I, I would need to see the material oh, okay. and know if I had any questions. <laughs> Okay. Sure, sure. I'm just going off the report. Yeah. Okay. That no, that's fine. Good. Thank uh, you, Jim. As far as I'm concerned. Uh, the uh, other uh, said, uh, and I, I've meant to bring this up in the past. You often mention uh, you how many press releases that uh, you do in a given month, and I'm I'm really actually more interested in the topics of those releases than the number of the releases. Uh, would it be too cumbersome to not, I don't want the releases themselves, but the topics so that we are cognizant of what is being uh, yes. distributed? Is we that, will do that. Would that be all starting right? Starting next month. Okay. Yes. Okay. Those are my only uh, questions. Okay. Other trustees, questions for Dr. Gibbons? Yeah, I have a question about the uh, RFQ for a preliminary assessment of the marketing and advertising agencies. Is that something that, that we put out an RFQ to receive some bids for marketing? Yes. You haven't done that either yet, right? That's, that's actually going out this week at the 
Okay. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, thank you. All right. Anything else for Dr. Gibbons? Okay, I need a motion. Motion to accept the president's report. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, any opposed? Motion carries. And thank you, Dr. Gibbons. Uh, Vice President for Academic Affairs report, item Number nine, uh, <clears throat> Dr. Vitale. Uh, thank you, Chairman Ash. Uh, actually, before we start with our two presentations tonight, we have a presentation from Tony Tompkins, Athletic Director, and Dr. Brenda Kelly on developmental ed. I'd like to introduce Dr. Michael Burns, who is our new Director of the Academic Resource Center. He came on board just a few weeks ago and is uh, settling in nicely into that position, so we wanted to recognize him. And now, right. welcome, aboard. Yeah. <laughs> welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. <throat> Did you want to introduce Tony, or you want me to? Yes. All right. And now uh, I'll let Tony Tompkins come up. He's got a, a presentation for you from athletics. Yeah. Welcome, Tony. We're doing well. Anxious to hear from you. Can you hear me all right? If not, I can just yell. So. You use that athletic voice. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Little coaching voice. So. That's it. All right. Can't believe it's only been. It's already been ten months uh, since I've been hired. So I do appreciate the little warmer winters than what I'm used to. I think they got uh, five inches yesterday where I'm from, so of more snow, so I'm really liking it here so far, especially. So I want to thank you for that. Um, just want to give you a, a little update of, of where we're at in our department. Um, let's first start off with the academic side. Um, I think we really made some solid gains uh, on, the, on the academic side of uh, compared to last fall. Um, had some significant improvements um, on the number of classes. Um, that were uh, failed compared to last fall. Um, we had 40% of our student athletes earn a GPA above a 3.0 in the fall of uh, 2013, um, which I believe is an improvement from, from the fall of 2012. And then uh, also what I'm really proud of is compared to the fall of 2012, uh, the course failure rate of student athletes has decreased uh, due to our continued effort to emphasize academic improvement. Um, I have on my notes, we had last fall, um, we had 170 classes that our athletes failed. And, um, and we had 84 that they withdrew from. And that was in fall of 2012. This year, uh, it dropped to 113, uh, which is a huge improvement. And um, the number of courses that they withdrew from went down to 40. Um, so um, doing really well. Actually, sorry, it was 57 from 170 to 57. So there's a gap of 113 that we improved on. So oh, I apologize for that. Oh, and then withdrawals were 44, okay? So there's a difference of 40 uh, on, on there as well. So huge, Excellent. huge significance in, in where we were doing on what our athletes were doing. Um, oh. I kind of gave you the breakdown here. Hopefully <laughs> My glasses. It's, it's a little <laughs> small. Now I see it's a little bit small. But I can definitely send you this PowerPoint if you guys want to look at it. It has a breakdown per team. Um, anything that is bold, that's been an improvement. Anything that's uh, not bolded is basically the same or there was a decrease in that. So I apologize. It showed up well for me, but I always wrote small in high school, so I always got in trouble with that. So, so I apologize. 
Um, so we've done really well. Um, it, we improved our overall GPA. Uh, where it says KCKCC GPA, we had a 2.69. Um, that includes everything um, that we take. And from junior college, they do it a little bit differently, which doesn't make sense to me, but I don't think it's accurate, but they don't count Fs. Um, so if you're just looking at junior college standards for NJCAA, it's at 2.93, which is still an improvement. Um, but I like to go off of the, of the KCKCC model because um, that includes everything. Um, the coaches are doing a really good job. Um, I believe everybody sh at this point should be on some sort of grade check with all of our, our, all of our coaches. Um, I don't think that was in the past. Um, they better be doing that now because that's something that we discussed and I think that's been an improvement and uh, just constant communication um, with, this, with the faculty as well, with our, with our student athletes and coaches. What are um, we, excuse me, yeah. I have a question if you go back. Yep. Uh, on track, Yep. Uh, fairly uh, noticeable that it's lower than most of the other sports mm -hmm. in either year. Right. Are we taking any more action in that arena? Yeah, I um, had, had a discussion with Coach, Coach Hobson uh, once I got the information um, about just the the standards need to raise a little bit as well as um, basically make sure there's communication from uh, the student athletes and the coaches with the, with the faculty. They're doing grade reports now and using the paperwork for that to, to get to faculty. So that, that has changed in that program. So we're hoping, we're hoping to see some improvement from, from last fall uh, to the spring. Okay. So yeah, that was communicated to him though. Good. Does he have an assistant coach? Yes. He has one. I'm dialed in. Full time. Uh, all of our assistant coaches are part time. Tony, why the big difference in numbers for men? 81 last year and 104 this year? Um, I believe it's because of uh, the men's track is a little bit bigger, uh, but mostly baseball. Uh, they brought in. Uh, they brought in 13 more, uh, so that's where the biggest part's coming from. And then most of the roster sizes have increased a little bit. Just, just kind of adding in here, but mostly baseball brought in a little bit extra of athletes. Good. Any more questions on that? I have a question. It's yes, not on what you talked about. Okay. At one of the games, <clears throat> that music was horrible. Which, which, which music? That you play. Was it the band or was it on? No, the no, no. The okay. bands are good. I want to. I want to. I want to marvel the the uh, the young lady that's next over here. What's her name? That did the. Andrika. Andrika. Yeah. You need to keep her pumped. You need to bring in the bands from the high school because I bring in some people to fill them bunches. Absolutely. As well as we got to recruit local here more. Okay. We got to because that's what's gonna fill up that place. Right. It's too empty. But the game before that. Mm -hmm. When the score was 103 for the girls, that's the one where the music was. What they played at the halftime, I know, I know I'm not, I know I'm 80 years old. <laughs> you don't have to tell me that. But I don't like all of that. And a lot of the people in the audience was, was 80, because okay. most of the old people are the ones that come. <laughs> but you, that, that music in the middle, it just got stopped. I'll take what, what kind of music was it? I don't really call it. Well, they shouldn't be cussing. No, I know there's, 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 not any, there's not any cussing. What was they saying? Are you I supposed to leave it to your imagination? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just They just start the sentence and I'm supposed to leave it. Yeah. I'll yeah. look into they it. Look into that. That. We can look into that. We can see what it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'll definitely look into that. Okay. So. But yeah, we want to, um, for all of our double headers, we definitely want to have, we have Wyandotte Band coming in right now. And uh, we want to okay, keep it. It would be up. excellent to have different bands from each one of the high yeah. schools. We, we're working because that'll that get some kids on this campus, absolutely. So, okay. all right, real good. All right, um, academically, obviously, the one review the standards for our study hall again. Um, we're basing on cumulative grade point average, and it's based off of core classes. Um, so, we try to make sure that uh, anything 100 level and above is what we're looking at, um, and not activity courses. Uh, like the English, the histories, your sciences, all that, that's kind of what we're basing off of for a continuing, continuing student, just because we want to make sure that we're falling in line 
uh, with NCAA requirements as well, um, which we are doing that. Um, there is a new rule that in order to play Division I, uh, you need to graduate with an associate's degree and have a 2.5, um, which is, has been, that's new. Uh, that happened in August. Um, so that's definitely ch kind of changing uh, the landscape a little bit of, of how, what we have to do academically to get kids to move on. Different from our, each division, um, but obviously we want to start attracting Division I athletes and we want to make sure that they're on track for that as well. And, um, and we're also realistic, you know, kids are not all going to play Division I, um, but if they can graduate here with a 3.0 or a 3.5 and go play at another school, NAI or a Division II um, or even a Division III, if they have a good GPA, they're going to get money academically, mm -hmm. and that's what we're trying to do, and that's less money out of their pocket. So that's, that's why this thing is, is it's working so far. So, and uh, coaches have bought in on that, and I think it's going to continue to improve. Um, Amanda Williams has been great in the, in the ARC, as so is uh, Cheryl Postlewaite. They kind of they'll let me know if a kid signs in and leaves or whatever, and we can, we can <laughs> find out who they are and all that stuff. So the communication has been really, really good with that. Good. And uh, it's just a, a continued work in process, uh, in progress. So um, we'll, we'll eventually keep getting it figured out. So. All right. Um, I'm really happy with overall with the, of how we are in our community service. Um, we are out there, which is good. Um, just kind of give, give you a list of, that's just a short list. Um, the list I had was at least a page long, and I just kind of break it down a little bit. But our student athletes are, are doing stuff. Um, <laughs> Besides the fundraising that they do for, for scholarships and everything, they are out doing other things for the community. Um, and some of those listed there. Um, the one I really liked at the end was the, the baseball team basically was out there. They umpired the entirety charity event for that wiffle ball tournament uh, for that spinal cord injury. I think I gave that report a couple months ago. Um, but that's, that's really a neat thing. And um, the cancer awareness that we've been doing with all of our sports, I think, I think that's just been really, really helpful. So. Uh, so our kids are be getting engaged out there, and, and, and we're looking for, uh, I, me personally, I'm trying to find one thing that we can possibly do as a department as well that we can kind of uh, cooperate with as well. So that's kind of in my plans as well. Um, now we had some questions about our, our random drug testing. Um, so far, that number's wrong. It should be 262 because we added some this, this past week. And uh, so we've had uh, 18 positive tests so far out of 262 tests. Um, so we just had uh, a couple more recently. Uh, but then uh, there's kind of a breakdown of kind of what happened with each student athlete that was tested positive. And uh, so far the total cost is around 13000 So it's about $50 per test. Um, but it's been very, very helpful for us. In, in the education part, words getting around. Um, if we find out about a, a party or something like that, then if I find out the names next day, you know, it's word spreading, hey, we're, you're going to get tested. You know, so it's, it's been a very good preventative measure, and I'm very happy with, uh, with the amount that we've had so far. And nothing's been heavy, it's been, it's been marijuana, um, so nothing, and we also test for um, uh, synthetic marijuana as well that's randomized. And so, uh, by the end of the semester, every athlete will be tested, um, and then so whether randomized or unrandomized. So, so that's been going well. Is either as uh, for the eighteen as any any particular sport? It's it's wide variety. More than other? Yeah, across the board, it's been um, it's just been all, all across the board, which is good. Okay. I mean, it's right. not good, but you know what I mean. So no, I understand it's not what you're saying. specific sport that's, that we can say, hey, these guys have a serious problem. So. Right. Um, but again, talk about Andrika. Um, we send them to her, and they do the drug counseling, and she talks to them about they do have a problem. And obviously, we sit them down and have a meeting with them before that happens with the suspensions and all that. And um, some of them, I mean, even the ones we've had some recently kids get kicked off, um, and they're very. Two of them especially, they've like, it's like finally a light went off in their head about, you know, this because this is just a small thing about what could happen because the future, you get a job, you can lose your job and it affects your marriage, all that stuff. So you get to have those conversations with them as well about this. So it's been really good. So, um, some future projects. Um, we're working on possibly getting the coaches on contracts. Um, we're looking at, um, 
how we can just a little bit more um, a more accountability than what we have right now. I think that'll help uh, getting them on contracts. Um, basically, the five things I've been talking to them about uh, with the coaches are the academic success, uh, academic success and the improvements, um, uh, the athletic success, team discipline, the community <laughs> service, and obviously, you know, uh, keeping over proper oversight of the budget as well. Um, so those are really the five things I'm going to be focusing on with them, and uh, we're meeting biweekly. Um, just kind of keeping, make sure we're having constant communications one-on-one -on -one and, and keeping them updated with their budgets and everything like that. So um, so hopefully by the, we should have that in a couple months. I'm going to be working with, with Cheryl on that as well and uh, trying to get that done. So um, you, are you working with Cheryl and our attorney? I, I don't know how it works, but I think I, I've been told to work with Cheryl first. I think she'll mm -hmm. work with our attorney on that. Uh, so okay. I've not worked with, with him yet directly. So. I'm sure everything will get a, if it's not approved, then we'll fix it. So. All right. Um, expanding our advertising, that's some, one of the future projects I want to continue to work on. Um, we have a new athletic website. Um, it's bluedevils.kckcc.edu. Um, we are 99.99% done. There's just a couple of glitches that we're trying to get done with that. Um, but Valerie Simberski's done a great job with getting all the information on that. Uh, we work with Prestel Sports that kind of hosts the website and uh, Dr. Baz and, and Lisa Klein and the information services kind of we all kind of work together on that and if you haven't seen it it's it's really top-notch and uh, I think there's some opportunities for for advertising on that as well um, on the signage uh, we'll have we'll have some signs out in the baseball field we've added some in the, in the gym already um, I think so far we've just having kind of like a collaborative effort um, Trying not to compete with with uh, with Patrick here, we're letting him know what we're what we're who we're contacting and all that stuff. So, but we raised over ten thousand dollars just simply on signage already this year. Um, so that's been very helpful. So, um, lastly, is just you know facility expansions. Um, I also want to thank you for the support that you've given us so far with with the baseball and uh, it's unbelievable and and the soccer and track and field. Um, it's done nothing but change the perception and also give a first impression of a great first impression of on that side of the campus and uh, we kind of tallied it with our advertising we get around 75,000 people a year um, that visit our campus with our athletic facilities so we get a lot of people that visit our campus and you know first impressions are very important in recruiting all of that and uh, so I just want to thank you again for that because we're definitely going to get our use out of it and I think it's a it's a great recruiting tool um, I believe there's still some growth for facilities that I'm going to continue to work on to see what we can do to, to meet our needs, our college's needs, as well as the community. And I think that's, I think there are, there are options out there for that. So just want to thank you for the time to give you an update. So thanks. Okay. Are there any other questions or specific I have one questions? More. Tony, do you do any community service for churches? Um, or can you? I think we can. Um, I am meeting with a gentleman that I don't know what organization he was, but he spoke at uh, Westside Rigo attend. He spoke in November, and he does a organization with student athletes and helps them because um, they're homeless that are still athletes and stuff like that. I'm trying to get more information on that, but I that's one thing I'm looking into right now. But if there's things that there are needs out there, we definitely want to know about them because coaches are like we work at the Rock Ronald McDonald House, um, our baseball team help paint a, a complex for somebody that was in need, you know, so there, there are things that we want to do. And if we know about them, we can definitely, we want to, we want to be involved. So mm. yeah, but I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any wrong, any rules or anything being broken with broken churches or anything. So, okay. But yeah. Just communicate Good. that with me and we'll see if we can't get any takers. So, <laughs> right. All right. Okay. Cool. Thank you guys. All right. Thank you very thank much, you. Tony. A uh, very positive report. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank, thank you, you Dr. Vitale. Right. Thank you. And uh, following Tony is Dr. Brenda Kelly from the Director of Developmental Education.
weren't invited to the party. <laughs> Hello, board, Hello. and all hey. others. Uh, Brenda Kelly presenting for you, before you. Um, you, several of you as board members have um, an outline of the presentation that I'm going to give. It's a one-page outline. And for those of you that are in the audience that do not have a copy, I will tell you, we're going to cover really four areas, starting with the student needs assessment. Uh, it'll be a PowerPoint presentation, a brief discussion of our redefining developmental education here at the Kansas City, Kansas Community College, uh, followed by a brief statement related to the status of our mandatory placement tests. And then we will um, close out by talking about uh, what we're doing as relate to the strategic plan and the mandate developmental uh, track sequence. So with that thought in mind, the student needs assessment for fall 2013. Um, at the beginning of this uh, sheet that I put before you, which others do not, are not aware, this is the work of not just myself. Uh, it represents our, uh, I I'm nervous. <laughs> okay, don't so, but I don't know why I am, but I am. But it represents the work of our advisory council, as well as our uh, center for research, as well as myself. So it's a collaborative effort. So I don't want to uh, assume any ownership just by myself. Our student uh, needs assessment, the purpose for uh, creating this needs assessment was to identify the educational needs of the students that are enrolled in our developmental ed courses. In addition, we want to identify what are the factors that impact those students. And, and the third thing we want to be mindful of is how we could assist the students in accomplishing their educational and career goals. Uh, and we want to be able to do that in an expedient and cost-effective manner. So uh, as it relates to the student needs assessment, this is a brief summary of how we went about conducting the survey. It was emailed to each of our students that are uh, assigned or enrolled in one or more developmental ed courses. Um, and these, this is a listing of the courses that, the, that we sent the emails to in the fall. Uh, English 99, uh, where it says HUDV 101, we now refer to that as our first year experience course, uh, and then the math 97, 99, and 104, uh, read 91, and read 92. Um, and we offered the uh, student needs assessment both on the main campus as well as in Leavenworth site. Okay. With that thought in mind, there was a random visit of myself to some of the classes to uh, support the students as well as help the, help the students in taking the student needs assessment. Um, I'm going to speak more to that in, in later, but that's basically the overall. We did get the support of all of our deans um, that were involved in serving developmental education to encourage the completion of this survey. As you might note, the enrollment number at that time, unduplicated, was 1,512. Uh, and then the student needs assessment was responded to by 412, 411 students, which represents a 27% response. The first question, or one of the questions that we asked was, have you attended another college? As you can see, 74% of the individuals responding had not, and 26% had. Then we asked them about their parents in terms of uh, your mother or your father, if they have attended college. And there we learned that 47% said yes, 43% um, said no, and 11% were not sure. They did not know if their parent has, parents had attended college. This particular slide reflects the reason for attending the Kansas City, Kansas Community College. This, the students could respond more than once. They could select more than one of the choices listed here. Um, so you will note that 70% of the responses indicated that they came to acquire an associate degree. Um, then 45% indicated that they wanted to take courses uh, for transferring to a another educational institution, probably higher level. Um, and then we have 22% that said they wanted to increase their knowledge base. 16% uh, felt, felt that if they um, 
would attend college, they would get a salary increase. There were some students that were here, 12%, that wanted to get a certificate. And 8% um, indicated that they were here to get a job promotion. There were 6% that did not use any of those responses. And then there's just this 1% that's noted there of students that was here to repeat a course that had been failed. Okay. The next area was what influenced your decision to come to the Kansas City, Kansas Community College? What influenced your attending? And the number one item selected was, or the greatest percentage selected was the location of our college, the cost, our financial and scholarships that are available by 35%. The course offerings um, indicated that 28% felt that the course offerings were a variety enough that they were interested in attending. They found some convenience in the times that we offered our classes, 28%. The class size represented 28%. Um, students felt that our class sizes was a reason to come and attend. As you know, 23% um, were influenced by family and friends. And 12% had learned of our academic support services, such as our tutoring, so they were here for that service. And because we have an open admissions, 12%, and our athletes are coming um, because 9% of them are coming because they're involved in some form of athletics here. And then there were 4% that did not give us a response. Uh, the next slide it's, reflects uh, on the, the challenge. Yes, me. yes, sir. Uh, go back. Were there uh, what I want, uh, definitions or explanations given to the students? Well, for an example, on academic support, then it says tutoring, but there's other forms of support, even the very classes that they're taking, right? And developmental education should be considered a support to furthering their success. And yet only 12% of them, so I'm wondering if there was, or am I reading too much into well, I what think you would have meant by that uh, selection. Okay, I think a factor that might influence that 12% response is that this was offered at the be this assessment was offered at the beginning of the course uh, of the school year, uh, meaning in the fall at the very beginning. And those students, remember, about 74% of them were first time, never attended an institution at all. Right. They were not familiar with our institution. They were just enrolling in perhaps our first year college experience course, but not mindful of what resources are available. But as soon as the student is on campus, our Center for Academic Resources, our ARC, Academic Resource Center, does submit and send to each of them by way of email um, a listing of the services that are available and the times and uh, the location. And this semester, I might add, uh, in addition to that being emailed to them, because I've been going to the classrooms, I've been taking that information to them to give it to them and to uh, show them where our ARC center is. So the point I'm trying to make here is that at the time that we did this survey, it's very likely that many of them did not know um, about where those resources are, but they were told by others, be it other uh, family and friends, but they did not know when they first came on board. But uh, I think if we were to do that, like at the end of the semester, that percentage would be far different. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? All righty. All right. I was getting ready to go into some of the challenges. The students indicated uh, these are challenges that we thought that might impede their success at our institution. And uh, so we had a listing, and we just had one word listing, like we had money, just the way they're listed is how we had them listed. And 52% of the students indicated that money, or the lack thereof, uh, was a concern. It presented a challenge for them. Uh, their need to work and their work hours, they were concerned that they were working more hours than they, they needed to work the hours, but it did impact their performance in their coursework. Or they were concerned that it would. That's 39% felt that way. The motivation, um, several of the students, 29% indicated that there is a concern about their motivation, um, being motivated to start, complete, do the work. Um, and then 27% indicated that transportation is a concern. Um, child care, 20% uh, indicated that they had child care needs. And 17% uh, 
of the respondents said that none of the above issues, uh, be it the health or the housing or the food addiction, as well as abuse, none of that along with those listed above influenced or they perceive to be a challenge. But you can see there are students that do have health concerns, 15%, 15% for housing, 13% for food, and then uh, the addiction, 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 I can't get that word out, addiction and abuse. You know, that's a self-reporting. And so that response is probably because they chose not to report. A few people did, but it's a self-reporting. And you may not want to acknowledge that you have issues there, okay? Um, all righty. Now, the next item we have is how comfortable are you with using the computer? And we asked this of our students, and if you really look at this chart close, this table closely, this pie chart closely, you'll realize that really only 2% are, are not comfortable. If you would look at it overall, 98% uh, are. Just that 59% are very comfortable, 28% are comfortable, and 11% are somewhat. But overall, 98% uh, are comfortable with the computer. When we asked them, do you have a computer in your home? 89% um, said yes, and 11% uh, uh, said no. Be mindful, I'm gonna just make, call it out like it is. Um, there are possibly the students that didn't respond um, to, because it was emailed to them, did not have a computer <laughs> or did not have access to it. So it's be mindful that those responding, uh, a greater percentage of them had uh, computers, okay? Um, now, how comfortable are you with using your computer? This is Dr. Grunke. Uh, helped us with this. She did this really helping us to see um, dividing it up in terms of uh, if you have a computer in your home or if you do not have a computer in your home, how comfortable are you? And it's apparent from this table that 62% of the students that have a computer in their home are far more comfortable with the utilization of the computer. So the point is if you have one in your home and you use it more frequently, obviously you're going to be more comfortable with it. Comparably to, you can see, only 36% of those individuals that do not have it in their home are not comfortable with the use. Okay. Um, our next statement is, do you have uh, easy access to the internet? And here again, you can note, it's just almost proportionate to if they have a computer in their home. 89% says yes, and 11% says no. Now this is really reflecting to out of their home because on this campus, if anyway you're on this campus, you have 100% access to the internet if you come to any of our uh, ARC or facilities. So this is reflecting out of their homes, I guess. All right. Um, now we try to break down a little bit more about those educational needs. What do you think you might need um, to accomplish your goal? And 40% of them indicated, I'm gonna need tutoring. 37% says, I'm gonna need help with time management. 30% says, I'm gonna need help with study skills. And then test taking, 29%. Some students said, I'm gonna need help with concentration. Concentrating on what I'm supposed to do, being focused, is 27%. Here again, 23% said, none of the above, I don't need the help. Um, I don't perceive I'm gonna have a problem. Um, then there's the small group discussion groups. That's something that they said they would wanted for help. Um, and then help with note taking, with reading, and then the help with uh, the computer skills. Uh, all of this information has been uh, discussed and shared with our advisory council, our uh, academic resource center. We're mindful of this and so we are really reaching out to help them meet these needs in terms of what they've expressed they need help in. Brenda, yes, could they uh, answer multiple, could they check multiple responses? Yes, they could. Okay. And that does reflect a multiple response. All that applied. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't say that. Um, we're down near the end here. Uh, have you set a date for completing your educational goal? As you all probably know, Stephen Covey tells us to plan with the end in mind. We're trying to get our students to think with that notion as well. Planning with the end in mind. What are your goals? What it is that you want to accomplish? And it appears that currently, uh, according to this survey, 55% have not done that. And 45% has says yes, 
um, I kind of have a date of completion when I want it to be done uh, with the, the activities here at Kansas City, Kansas Community College. Um, do you know where to go um, for academic advising? 90% uh, of the students says, yes, I know where to go, and 10% says no. Uh, do you know where to go at KCK if you need tutoring? 83% uh, says, yes, I know where to go. And 17% says, no, I don't know where to go. Um, then we ask them, well, do you know how to use WebAdvisor? And this is really important to us. And 95% of the students says, yes, I know how to use it. And 4% says, no, I don't know how to use it. And then 1% says, uh, what is that, WebAdvisor? They don't know what it is. Okay. Now, I'll make a little statement about this one because this is how we communicate with the student. One of the primary ways as it relates to their enrollment, um, their financial aid, their awards letter, it goes on. There's many things. So this is crucial that the student really knows how to utilize his service and be in communication with, with the college. Do you, I think this will be our, probably our last slide, do you know how to use the help desk? And it appears that 68% um, of them say yes they do, 25% says no and 7% doesn't know what the help desk is. Now this question is important because our math is, um, the, the, the math that the students are taking in the developmental ed component is primarily computer driven, and if they are having any issues with their computer or with getting online, they should be able to call the help desk um, and get help from home. And so that's why it's important for them to know that that's a resource available to them in the absence of being in the classroom. Um, Oh, okay. The next question we asked is, have you used the academic advising services of Kansas City, Kansas Community College? And 68% says, yes, we've used the service. And 32% says, no. Um, this is, again, breaking the data down a little bit further. Have you, it appears that, let me see now. Okay, this is looking at, have not used the advising services. It appears that the blue, it says that they have not set a goal to completion date. So when they use advising services, it appears that students are more inclined to set a goal for a completion date. When they don't use the services, they don't necessarily set a goal for a completion date as well as readily. Okay. You got one question. Yes, ma'am. Want yes. me go back to that uh, one? Are most of the students uh, first time students? 74 percent before at all. 74 percent of the students okay, that responded. Okay, so if that's true, mm -hmm. most of them were, were were freshmen, and they're they hadn't visited or came ahead of time. You know, because we got to work better. I know at getting students on this campus to see what it is like, mm -hmm. and I, and it bothers me at times when the the freshmen, I know they don't know what they want to take. And they changed their major three or four times, and I know what that figures are. Mm -hmm. But it, it bothers me that they don't know in the beginning that they don't even have a goal set. That's because they don't know what they want to do. <laughs> they don't, what, they don't, because they don't know what they want to take. They're just taking the cl basic classes. Mm -hmm. So how do we get to the first time students so that they will look at anybody's college? Well, that is such a segue into where I'm going next. <laughs> Thank you so much, because one slide next, and then I'm going to answer your question. So it is not, it is a good segue into where we want to go and tell you what we as an institution are doing about just that, that you okay. mentioned. Um, and that takes us into our advising services, the advising center. And we're trying to get the students to tell us how helpful is it. But I'm going to get the, please, your question is not forget, forgotten because it's the second item on the agenda. Okay. okay. Um, uh, we, we are seeing that they find the, the advising services of KCK to be extremely helpful. In fact, 97% of the students that uh, have used the services felt that it was helpful, and only 3% said that it was not. Whether it was very helpful, 36%, or helpful, 46%, or somewhat helpful, 16%. You put all that together, that's still 97% of the students felt that it was helpful, okay? So with that in mind, 
that's the end of the uh, presentation as it relates to the needs assessment, but if you will see from your uh, agenda I put before you, the next item I want to talk about addresses the question of, uh, oh, I'm going to have to skip to get there. Well, we discovered, the next item is the, we redefine developmental education, because here's what we discovered. We discovered that students were coming to our institution, and uh, if they're first time, and they haven't attended any other institution, it is mandatory that they take our placement tests. And the results of the placement test determines what courses they'll be taking. And what we were discovering is that we would have students, X number of students taking the placement tests, but less students enrolling in the courses. Okay, so we are really trying to look at that a little bit closer to see now, can we in fact impose a situation where the student uh, does take the placement tests and uh, those results be given to our advisement center, our advising center, and that the student has to be seen by an advisor to be enrolled into their courses. We are at the beginning stages of looking at the logistics of that, moving toward what we call mandatory advisement. And because we know that the students are aware of our advisement services and they do utilize them, we're trying to guide them in the usage of it so that we do not have students that are um, taking the placement tests and not taking the courses that they need as a result of the placement test. The placement test tells us whether are you college ready or are you not college ready. And based upon your scores, it just implied you're not college ready sometimes. And if that is the case, we have courses we want to have you to take to help you become college ready. Some students circumvent that and just enroll into other courses, whatever they choose. And we're trying to, and then they're not successful. Not all, but many are not successful. And so they withdraw, and it's a waste of time for them and a waste of money. So we're trying to really get a tighter range on that. And this is where we're trying to do the uh, mandatory advisement and that we could advise the students into the courses that they need to take based upon their, their placement tests. So um, that gives an a awful lot of weight to one assessment. To the, to the placement test. To the or placement, the placement test. Uh -huh. uh, um, so I'd like to hear a little more thought of uh, on this one uh, measure being the uh, loan criteria first seeing you know there's a lot of variables um, that come into play especially when you look at our you know the average age of our student uh, they're adults uh, you know a lot of times we we speak of the what I would term young adult teenage versing you know 30 years of age um, so I'm uh, I just wondered your thinking. Could I give a little to add to that? Because y your concern is a legitimate one. We do offer the students three opportunities to take the placement tests. We try to encourage them to enroll as early as November if you plan to go the following fall. So if you start your uh, enrollment process early and you take the placement test, you have some opportunities to improve that score if in fact you can improve it. There is also, uh, through Compass, ACT provides um, help uh, tests that you can go online to do a lot of sample tests and mastery to master certain components of the test. When you take the placement tests here at our institution, if you pass a portion of it, you do not have to retake that portion again. And that may get you out of taking the English course, depends on which, which portion you're not proficient in. So if we are able to get more students applying earlier for our institution and taking the placement test earlier, um, like I said, as early as November or something of that nature of the year prior to actually planning on attending, if we're able to do that, get them to take it early. That's the point, that they can take it three times I before what, they actually know. I think what Dr. Rios is really getting at is there, rather than putting so much weight on just a single <coughs> instrument, whether it's AccuPlace or Compass or some other mm -hmm. placement instrument, are there other factors that we could take into consideration when determining whether or not a student should be in a developmental track or not? Is that more, I think that's more what he's getting at rather than 
I am sure there are. I am um, sure there are, but this is what we're currently doing. But that doesn't mean that's what we have to continue to do. It, it, does the age play a lot in it, though? I mean, if I've been out of school five or 10 years, 20 years, and I take the place of the test, I'm not going to score as well as somebody just got out of, of that senior class, even if it was the low senior class, they still should be able to outdo me. Or does that happen? Because since we got older students that have been away from school a while, do that time lag in there going to mess them up? I think we can revisit it, but currently that's how it is. And, and, okay. and, and I'm not saying that's the way it has to be. We're, I'm just responding to board mandate. <laughs> this is a <laughs> mandated test by, by our governing board. So if we want to do something different and, and other than, we can definitely explore what are some additional variables we can put into there, be, you know, be it GPA, even though grades predict grades. I mean, there are other things that we could put into it, but this is a board mandated test that you all are saying uh, to attend this institution, you need to take an entrance exam. How come I said that I brought a student up here and so I decided to take the test while he was taking it? Uh -huh. Oh, it was horrible. But that English, <laughs> I had forgotten everything I learned. <laughs> Colleagues. Well, well, it's not so it's much about whether to take and have an exam. That's, but to my concern is that it's just a single measure sing, uh, and uh, totality of the uh, individual and other. Um, well, I just think uh, you know. We should look the, at other variables. Uh, look at other true. variables to 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 see. Because not, none of it, uh, just because you pass the acuplacer is not 100% guarantee, or the compass, 100% guarantee that you're going to be a successful college student. I mean, there's, that's not a guarantee. That's very true. Uh, even a higher ACT score. He usually ends up going into work ethic, the focus, mm -hmm. uh, and some of the, some of the reasons why they uh, have come mm -hmm. uh, tend to be the uh, intrinsic drivers that end up getting the you know the, res the successful result mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I'm, I'm just my wondering is if we are contemplating looking at the other uh, things uh, such as with the younger uh, students you know GPA uh, map scores uh, or, which is one of the more uh, trusted scores within K-12. Not, not, I understand, but so you know, and then that, and then that, it, that for most uh, students goes from K through 12 literally. So you don't just have you know a, a, an assessment here and there, but you have an actual tracking to see, uh, well not tra uh, trend, to see what the student has done over a period of time. To make a prediction, then what would they be likely to do continuing on? So it's just it's just something to think about. I think as there, you're continuing your work. I forgot to mention. I'm sorry. There is one more verbal I did forget to mention. Is that those students that take the ACT and have 23 a score of 23 and higher are exempt from taking our placement tests. Uh, so they are automatically are allowed to go into the regular coursework. Uh, so there there is that exemption. And those students that have, I think it's over 30 credit hours, 30 credit hours uh, are allowed, if they've already completed 30 credit hours at another institution, they are not required to do the mandatory test. Still, we're, I'm mindful of your concern, and it is something for us to look closer at. Thank you. Uh, well, yeah, I think the whole survey obviously does that. It gives you and your staff and others here, uh, you know, some things to look at, and I think maybe we've given you some you know some ideas as well so good right. okay. excellent thank you thank you dr kelly all right thank you uh, just a, a few more things before i uh, ask you to approve my report i just thought I'd, I'd give you a little bit of a more of an explanation on some of the things that i was doing this last year uh, when dr kramer and i met with cerner it was to really kind of pick their brains about what if anything, we could do to maybe make our uh, associate graduates uh, more uh, employable as associates and 
quite honestly, they were pretty pretty adamant that they're looking for the bachelor's degree. Uh, there were some programs that they do have where current college students and even high school students can uh, get into internship programs and work through there. But um, they even said that even with their bachelor's degree hires, they put them in a 24-week uh, uh, training program mm -hmm. that usually all of their employees go through before they they really turn them loose on the Cerner way. So, but it was it was a good discussion, and uh, I think we've got some directions that we can go with our program as a result of it. Good. Um, the AOK that's the uh, accelerated opportunity funding that the state uh, is part of that uh, <coughs> allows us to work in the course rooms of the of the technical programs to help students who are either don't have their GED or need some uh, basic remediation to get through the skills that they need to either earn their GED uh, yeah, or to reach the skill level they need to be able to complete their certificate programs and move on. Um, the Tech Education Authority, that's the group that oversees all the technical education in the state. And basically they're there to they approve new tech programs going on at being proposed uh, to, to the KBOR for the state. Um, at that particular meeting, we also took a look at the, at the governor's uh, 2015 budget recommendations and looked at the uh, tiered education uh, state aid distribution um, that's been uh, already been approved for 2015, and we hope it stays intact as we go through the legislative session. With Metropolitan Community College, the environmental health and safety is a degree that they offer, and what we're looking at is offering that degree to our students who would, <coughs> then, who would actually take courses with us, the, the gen ed courses, if you will, and then take the program-specific courses at Metropolitan Community College. Those are offered as hybrid courses, and they require the students uh, to attend uh, on campus at Metropolitan one, one night a week or one day a week for each course that they would take. So it's not a lot of driving, but it would give a, an opportunity for our students. Uh, the Healthy Wine Dot, the Healthy Community Wine Dot Steering Committee. Dr. Daniel sits on that, and uh, a lot of times I'm not able to go because they always conflict with the meeting that we have standing with Dr. Givens. But um, I try to uh, go and, and get there as, as quickly as I can. And I think the biggest thing at this meeting was to find a real direction for the steering committee and some projects that we could get a hold of and really work on seeing to completion within the next three years for uh, that group. And then, of course, the PTK recognition luncheon, which you got to see um, the two students, Gabrielle and Ryan. And they really reflect the students that we have at KCKCC. Ryan is your non-traditional student, uh, been out in the workforce, in the construction, doing the manual labor, and you know he saw that that wasn't where he wanted to spend the next 20 or 30 years and so he's you know working on a civil engineering that's his goal and uh, you know he's gotten he's seen the need for that from his work in construction Gabriella is yep. more the traditional graduate from high school and come to college student but she's one of those students who you know and I don't know why she, you know if there was uh, money just not ready to live home yet, what her reasons were, or just the great education she could get here at KCKCC. But, you know, she's still living at home. She's finishing her, her two-year degree. She'll be moving on to Washburn uh, in the fall. And, you know, she's saved a lot of money for her and her family by doing that. So I think that's commendable. So um, if there are no other questions, I ask for your approval of my report. Glad to answer any questions you might have. Trustee Maddox. Uh, the uh, Career Center is doing a series of workshops in, in Bonner Springs. How are those set up? Uh, do we pursue those or do they ask us to do them? Uh, I'm not sure. John, do you know if those Career Center, if, if we set those up or if they ask for them? But uh, the ones that we're doing like at the high school, Bonner Springs. 
they're done both ways. They're, I guess they're set up both by the, at the school's request and our staff going in. I was just wondering, are we doing any of those in the urban core? Uh, I'm not aware of any, and I'll have to find out. Pardon? I'll make sure that there's a list provided. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Marianne? Um, <coughs> did, when you were speaking with Cerner, did they also tell you they still wanted a 3.5 for the GPA for the bachelor's degree? No. They didn't get that specific. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? I just was wondering, under the uh, financial aid uh, appeals, it said 145 uh, um, were approved on condition. I just wondered what the condition. What's, you know what the what's, conditional what's approval of a, condition? of a financial aid appeal? Yeah, that's what it says. It says appeals approved with conditions. Yes. What, what, what are our um, online enrollment numbers? Do you, know? uh, you mean the total number of students enrolled online? I don't have that number off the top of my head. Sonki, is that a number you have stored away? Okay, about, yeah. And so for perspective, is, has that number been coming up? Is it trending? Which way is it trending? Probably, you know, looking at how our whole enrollment's been trending down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we okay. Move uh, acceptance of the uh, uh, report. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Dr. Vitale. And now it's time for Vice President Bodie. Thank you. Um, we might as well start with a resolution for the bond. Um, the bonds were, uh, according to the resolution passed at the last board meeting, the bonds were marketed this week, um, Monday, excuse me, last week, Monday. We had a weekend in between. Um, Tuesday, they were, they were um, sold. Um, the market was strong for bonds. We have $183,000 savings overall over the 15-year period. Uh, interest rate was down. It was within the parameters that you approved at the last board meeting. Um, today I'm asking you to approve our entry into what's called Supplemental Lease Purchase Agreement Number 2. If you remember Supplemental Lease, we had the original bond issue, mm -hmm. and we had a Supplemental Bond issue, um, and then this is Supplement, that was Supplement 1, and this is Supplement 2. Um, it has uh, been reviewed um, by numerous legal teams. It's in approval, and I have Mr. Wynn's marked up copy of this long thing that he says I have to read again. All right. Got your water? Okay. <laughs> so, if I may. A resolution authorizing Kansas City, Kansas Community College, Wyandotte County, Kansas, to enter into a supplemental lease purchase agreement number two, the proceeds of which will be used to pay the cost of acquiring construction or installing certain educational building improvements on the college campus in Kansas City, Kansas and to approve the execution of certain documents in connection therewith. Therefore, be it resolved by the governing body of Kansas City, Kansas Community College, Wyandotte County, Kansas, as follows. Section 1, authorization and approval of college documents and declaration of trust. The college documents and the supplemental declaration of trust, too, are hereby approved in substantially the form submitted to and reviewed by the governing body on the date hereof, with such changes therein as shall be approved by the chairperson 
Chair Pearson's execution of the college documents to be conclusive evidence of such approval. The issuance of the series 2014 certificates of participation pursuant to the declaration of trust and is described in the preliminary official statement is hereby authorized and approved. The obligation of the college to pay basic rent payments as defined in the lease under the lease shall constitute a current expense of the college and shall not in any way be construed to be an indebtedness or liability of the college in contravention of any applicable constitutional or statutory limitation or requirement concerning the creation of indebtedness or liability by the college. And all provisions of the lease shall be construed so as to give effect to that to such intent. The college covenants that pursuant to KSA 75-37125, its obligation to make all rental payments is not subject to Kansas cash basis law and therefore the college is required to make such rental payments from whatever source of revenue as is legally available, including the levy of ad valorem taxes without limit if necessary. The chairperson or vice chairperson if the chairperson is unavailable is hereby authorized and directed to execute and deliver the college documents and to approve changes to the supplemental declaration of trust due on behalf of and as an act and deed of the college. The secretary or acting secretary, if the secretary is unavailable, is hereby authorized to affix the college's seal to the college documents and attest such seal. Said seal. Section 2, approval of preliminary official document statements. The preliminary official statement is hereby ratified and approved for the purpose of enabling the underwriter comply with the requirements of Rule 15C2-12B1 of the Securities and Exchange Commission, the college hereby deems the information regarding the college contained in the preliminary official statement to be final as of its date, except for the omission of such information as is requested by Rule 15C2-12B1, and the appropriate officers of the college are hereby authorized, if requested, to provide the underwriter a letter or certificate of such effect and to take such other action or execute such other documents as such officers in their reasonable judgment deem necessary to enable the underwriter to comply with the requirements of such rule. The final official statement is hereby authorized and approved, supplementing and amending and completing the preliminary official statement with such changes therein and additions thereto as shall be approved by the officer of the college executing the final official statement said officer's execution thereof to be conclusive evidence of said officer's approval thereof and the public distribution of the final official statement by the purchaser of the refunding certificates of participation are in all respects hereby authorized and approved. The chairman of the college is hereby authorized to execute and deliver the final official statement on behalf of and as an act and deed of the college. Section 3, further authority. The college shall and the officials and agents of the college are hereby authorized and directed to take such actions, expend such funds, and execute such other documents, certificates, and instruments as may be necessary or desirable to carry out and comply with the intent of this resolution and to carry out, comply with, and perform the duties of the college with respect to the college documents, the other documents authorized or approved hereby, and the 2014 additional, 2014 additional improvements and underlying real property as part of the project. Without limiting the foregoing, the chairperson is hereby authorized, if required, to execute any certificate or agreement to allow the underwriter to comply with Rule 15C212 of the Security Exchange Commission. Section 4, mandatory provision. The mandatory contract provision prescribed by the Kansas Department of Administration in Form DA-146A, as amended, shall not apply to the college documents except that the provisions of KSA 71-201A and KSA 71-201B shall apply to the college documents. The effective date, this resolution shall take effect and be in for full force from and after its passage by the governing body, adopted by the governing body of Kansas City, Kansas Community College, Wyandotte County, Kansas, this 18th day of February, 2014. Move approval of resolution number 14. Dagger. Right, we have a motion in uh, second. Is there any question or comment? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you Thank Brian. You um, my report begins on page 29 of your, uh, <coughs> of the document and, and goes through page 33. Um, I think the business office's report highlights uh, uh, the busy time January is, 1098Ts, 1099s, and W2s all poured out of that business office um, last month, <coughs> a busy, busy month for, for the staff. Um, last year's 1098Ts, we had, uh, I guess it must have been about 
June or July, the IRS decided to go after all the community colleges. Um, and for 1098Ts, which are tuition and scholarship paid um, forms that we provide to every student, students that didn't have any, that didn't have correct um, social security numbers. And between um, the business office and doc, Dr. McDowell's office, we put a concerted effort into that. Um, since then, um, we hope we have all of the community colleges went together and wrote the same letter asking for relief from the fine mm -hmm. that they were going to give us. However, we think we did a much better job this semester. Um, and a thanks to, to Dr. McDowell's admission people as we battle to try to get students to have proper identification. But it was a busy, it's a busy month with W-2s, 1098s, and then 1099s. So. Uh, Vice President Bode, I was wondering uh, if it might be uh, good to have the uh, new uh, bookstore manager just kind of give us a progress of what he is. Because he talked in there about streamlining the process for paying for books uh, and financial aid. So I'm sure that he's, you know, uh, what, refining different things. And if we could have an update uh, from him as part of your uh, report, maybe next time, uh, or, or at a time that you that you can talk and just let us know. But I, I think that would be good information. The bookstore is such a, you know, a lifeblood of our, our, our revenues, um, I'd like to just, just hear. And it comes down, the, the, the real issue there is most of the systems that the bookstore can get to in their own system um, don't interface well with um, the financial aid system. And especially when, um, when the financial aid system uh, has a budget in it, and it may say you have, uh, let's say, $1,000 of excess financial aid. But you only have five classes or three classes, whichever it is. And so the financial aid people have worked budgets for all of these students, and it'll come up and say, okay, out of that 1000 you maybe should spend $400 on books. Well, all of the systems we have just reach in and grab and say 1000 and all the sales lady in the bookstore try to sell them a computer and three sweatshirts and um, two backpacks and get their $1,000 spent at our plate. That defeats the purpose of what the financial aid people work so hard to do. And so that is part of what that issue is, is getting those systems where we don't just see, yeah, Bodie, you have $1,000 that you can spend. What we also see is the budget that has been put together that says, yeah, we'll only spend 400 on your books and maybe spend 600 on rent mm -hmm. or, or something like that. And there's that, that, that's what the real issue is. And Mark and the financial aid um, team are trying to, without compromising um, people's personal information, that's a tough, it's a really tough nut to crack. And I'll give you a report as we get a little closer and try to do, because sure. they're truly conflicting, um, they're truly conflicting uh, approaches. The business, the, the bookstore will sell you everything they can sell you. You got a thousand dollars financial aid credit, we'll take a thousand and one of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the ladies in financial aid, you have a thousand dollars of financial aid credit. They know you should only spend a few hundred in books and you need to use the rest of that and there's that conflict and the two systems that they all use conflict and we're trying to figure out how to smooth that, okay. that edge. Well, that um, makes sense. <coughs> uh, my other question uh, came from uh, housing. I saw that uh, there was 115 of the 148 available units uh, filled. That's kind of down from where we were talking about having waiting lists for people. So and I was wondering I, what I think that. Um, Coach Thompson's um, <laughs> speech about um, how many people are being tested mm -hmm. and the increased emphasis that we have put on because obviously last year there was um, what was considered to be too many events in that uh, housing and the increased emphasis that is put on. Um, we had a lot of people that just said they wouldn't come back because we enforced the rules. Good. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. All righty. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions for Vice President Bodie and his report? Uh, 
as part of Vice President Pody's report, I, uh, the trustees did read the letters in regard to potential internships under the Vice President. And is that what the board was looking for? Remember, we we talked, and I just wanted to make sure that it was a satisfied uh, committee, but I didn't know. It talks about the internships, but it didn't talk about the uh, the courses that they they had discussed early on. Well, those courses are still being worked with, um, uh, you know, building a course is easy to talk about. Building a course that's accepted by um, faculty and the Kansas Board of Regents is a different, um, a different trail. And I know Ed Kramer had been working with Chevron on that and trying to, to get through that, but um, that's going to be a lot Work in longer um, process than uh, than the availability of internship. Internship. No, that's fine as long as it's still on the table. I just wanted to make sure. I, I see Dean Kramer. Uh, that would be the case. Right. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, we haven't met much for the initial meetings Chevron, etc. Okay. Any other questions? Move approval of the Vice President's report. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve Vice President Bodie's report. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The toppling uh, notebooks there, yeah. I think. Okay. Under 11A finance, under payment of the bills, it begins on page 37, goes through 89. Ask your approval of payments of the bills. Move approval of payment of the bills. Second. All right. Are there questions, comments? Uh, just the only comment. Uh, the, the three million is, is, is a typical uh, amount of uh, uh, monthly uh, bills. So we were right in line with the trend. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And under 11B, the financial <coughs> reports begin on page 90 and go through page 93. Uh, after review of the uh, cumulative uh, budget at 51% is, uh, is a good place to be. Uh, we did note instruction and uh, facility support. But again, uh, they're a little over <coughs> percentage-wise. But given uh, what we've been working on, uh, those those did not appear to be out of line <coughs> in our view. Just want you to know that they were reviewed. Second. Okay. Is there a motion? <laughs> There's a second. Move. Uh, <laughs> move approval. <laughs> All right, JD's moving approval. Now, Clyde. Now you second. Now you second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. And then um, way back to page four and five um, of your of your book, I asked for your approval of, of uh, finance items C one through six. <laughs> six being on the amended agenda. Six being on the amended I, agenda. I move approval, um, but I would like Vice President Bodie to uh, give explanation. To our uh, gym floor bid. Yeah, I'll second it. Have to hold it up. All right. We have a motion and a second, and now uh, Brian, I, if you I could I answer. In number three, I should have also explained the same thing as number four. Um, Pro Foundation Incorporated, besides just being $170 higher, and they're the ones that are going to do the other bid. They use a dry foam. It's almost styrofoam that they spray into <coughs> the um, voids under our floor to lift the floor. The other bids we got are what they call wet grout. Mm -hmm. And they're just, it's like 
pumping um, sludge concrete Water. under them to pump them up. And with some of our voids that we don't know how deep they go and how far they go, um, <coughs> the bid that we got from them said it'll be this much unless it starts pumping away and going away. Mm -hmm. The other issue really specific on the basketball floor is, and we have our architect team in looking right now, we have another bubble on the basketball court, um, almost the same place we had it last year, um, where the floor is just rising up in one spot. And we got the test teams in again, and we have like 70% humidity there, and we have like 28% humidity on the rest of the basketball floor. And mm -hmm. so we had to bring in a company, and we moved a hole in the floor and we're blowing air underneath it to dry out that one spot. We can't figure out out in the middle of the, f of the field house mm -hmm. floor why that one little area is real humid. Mm -hmm. We have all the drawings from when this building was built. Well, we have the ones that it was designed, not how it was built. But it is right along one of the seams yes. of where the two, the flat, the part of the field house that's on one level meets the part of the field house that's on multiple levels. And there's a duct in there that we can see in one of the old drawings. We have um, our architect company in looking to see if they can find if that duct actually exists. If it does where it's pulling air, it does look like it may go to one of the locker rooms, so it may be pulling warm, moist air out. Mm -hmm. Why it would run over and always end up in the same spot on the basketball court but the reason the basketball floor is rising is because the humidity in that spot so high and the wood's wet. Yeah. So we're drying it, and then we got somebody looking for it. But we don't want to put any more moisture underneath that basketball floor if we can help it. Right. And Spartan Foundation repair is wet grout. And so please, we ask that you approve the, foam, the styrofoam. Okay. I've got a question. Yes, ma'am. You sure in the springs is not up under there? Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's only humidity, it's not water. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, I told you so. I do come back and say this. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank right. you. The motion carries. Good. Okay, we are ready for item agenda number 12 is that right yeah. and at this point good afternoon for item 12 i have the uh, the uh, personnel agenda for this month and i'd like to on uh, section a is for present for your information is for resignation for several employees and then on section B, we're asking your approval. There's 13 applicants that we'd like to hire and one employee termination. We're asking for your approval. Move approval of the report. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Are there questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Motion carries. Um, continuing ed and community service, is there some report or action necessary there? Oh. No. No. Just we approval. just hired them. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We're at uh, item uh, 13, report of committees. Which committee uh, would like excuse to Excuse me. Yeah. I need to request approval for number 15, continued education and yeah. community service, the contractor, contract instructor payments. Okay, that's what I was just asking. Oh, okay. That's what I was just asking, yeah. Okay, because I, I, thought, I thought we went through 14. Yeah. Okay, all right. So, Michael? Oh, 15's on that paper. Yeah. Well, 15's 15. That's all under that human resources. Oh, that's human resources. Resources. Okay, okay. okay, the three people under uh, under number 15 is uh, Don Glasgow, uh, BLS for healthcare providers, a CPR class. Uh, start end date is 125.14, a $210 contract payment. Mary Mayer, uh, consultant fee, primetime club, January 2014. Uh, start date 1 6, ended 130.14, in the amount of $420. And 
Sue Marler, Introduction to Personal Computers, 124.14, uh, $30 contract payment. 30. 30. So, so moved. Yes. What, what, what is, is, okay. Go ahead. What's Prime Time Club? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Get Do they get to go free? Uh, I think it's five dollars. Five dollars? Fifty and over. Okay. And under eighty. Under eighty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> under eighty. No, she he said fifty and over. Fifty. <laughs> fifty on up. Fifty. Okay, so to clarify, the motion was to approve. Approve the report. Those three. Yes. So did we cover 15 or not? We covered. Yeah. That's part of his report. Yeah, that's part of the. Oh, Counselor? Motion, second, vote. I moved, I moved approval. And I second. So second so. down here. And we did the whole report, including 15. So, all right, we're good. Okay, committee reports. Who would like to start? I'll start. Okay. <laughs> um, I talked to uh, uh, Senator Moran this morning. And on. Who? Uh, Senator Moran. Oh, Senator Moran. Yeah. Okay. The right. 27th of February is when the Carl Perkins, Carl Perkins, <laughs> whatever they're going to do with the Carl Perkins. Grant funding. Mm -hmm. Yeah is gonna come up. He said he would keep me in touch because I had worried him to death about it before I fell. Okay. And I'll give my best report when I get well. <laughs> okay, I think Marianne's really trying to talk about our, uh, our uh, legislative summit trip with uh, <clears throat> ACCT and AACC that uh, trustees Flunder, Maddox, and I attended last week in Washington, D.C. Um, and so that was a part of our discussion with Senator Moran. We also saw um, Congressman Yoder, and we met with staffers uh, from Congresswoman Jenkins' office and also um, Senator Roberts' office. Um, and so it was the the meetings, I think, were very productive. Uh, the Kansas Association of Community College Trustees and all the 19 community colleges helped sponsor and host a legislative reception. We had uh, good attendance from all of the legislators' offices. However, Senator Moran was the only actual legislator that was able to attend uh, the reception that night. And we had um, a, a lot of really good one-on-one -on -one time uh, with him at that reception. Um, outside of an unscheduled trip to the hospital that we <coughs> made on Monday uh, following um, Miss Flunder's uh, 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 blunder on the steps <laughs> at the uh, blunder, Russell <laughs> State Office building, and I do have a photo for anybody who wants to see it. Uh, and you see she's sporting a nice, beautiful purple cast on her left arm there where she, uh, she broke her wrist. But uh, uh, that was our only uh, setback early on. And then uh, later, I think uh, Trustee Maddox got stuck due to the snowstorm. And I'm not sure when he made it home, did Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. Sunday, yes. So uh, Marianne and I were able to make it out Wednesday afternoon before the storm. Uh, actually, it snowed while we were taxiing out to right. take off. Uh, it started, and we made it back um, in, in order for me uh, to attend the PTK and the KACCT meeting in, in uh, Topeka Thursday. So the trip was productive. Um, Wendell got a little extra R&R &R downtime, <laughs> uh, uh, much to his chagrin. Uh, spent a couple of extra days there. Uh, but the... The meetings were productive, we, we believe. And uh, we, ha we have good legislative support, you know, in Washington, D.C., I think. Uh, they, are, they are on the same page as we are. They understand the issues uh, regarding the particular uh, 
particular, you know, grant funding programs, Perkins, Pell, uh, WIA, Workforce Investment uh, Act, and, and uh, all of those uh, things. So uh, I think it was time well spent and it was productive. I think the. Would you uh, like to add, Wendell? Yeah, we had about uh, on the we had a national agenda that we we used to meet with all the legislators and, and the aides, uh, and and among them was re we reauthorization workforce investment act, um, and you know that that has been pending legislation for about what ten or twelve years yes. now. We've been trying to get the um, we are reauthorized that as well as some of the funding restored. And we had some conversations about that. And it looks like for the first time, and I think Dr. Hunt and I have been, been uh, on the Hill two or three times talking about this reauthorization, but it looks like it's finally gonna happen this year. It, it seems like um, uh, there's a lot of movement on it, and uh, apparently there are some Republicans who are retiring that wanna see it get, it, see, see it get done, and then there's also some some Democrats that want to get it done, both House and Senate. So that 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 was uh, best news we had when we were there. So. Very good. Okay, are there other committee reports? I think the only the only thing I would it just so you all know things are moving along with uh, the gala, uh, the fundraiser for the endowment and and the college is moving forward. They've broken up into committees. And those committees have started to meet. Uh, I'm on the uh, auction committee. Uh, unfortunately, the weather kind of, you know, shifted some of those. So we're actually meeting for the first time uh, next Monday. So don't have a lot to report. Ray, Ray may have, have something in addition uh, from his committee. But just to let you know, things are moving forward uh, through now the subcommittee uh, structures. Anything to add, Dr. Daniels? Uh, committee is meeting or after Thursday after the first time. Okay. Good. All right. Agenda item 14. Any unfinished business? Goodness. Take this to the all important agenda item 15. Move we adjourn. Second. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? You can stay as long as you want if you're opposed. But to the rest of you, good evening and thank you for being here.